Hey guys, Brian Hewitt here from Stogie Review here at the uh, Chattanooga Tweet Up 2011, co-sponsored by Stogie Review, and some other guy, something about Tiki Bar, I don't know what the hell that's all about, but whatever, you know, Where's that Dave? stuff. And uh, here with John Huber, uh, of the newly minted crowned heads. Minted? I guess minted. Minty. No, they're okay. not really minty. No, 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 okay. Uh, Java did that, didn't they? Yeah, the, uh, Java, the mint, mint mint chocolate, something mint or other. Chocolate. So, uh, you know, we didn't see you at the, uh, the trade show because, uh, you know, you were still getting things underway. You know, tell, us, tell us what's going on with Crown Heads. Well, um, we recently made our announcement that we've partnered with EP Carrillo Cigar Company. Um, they will be starting our production this month, so we're very excited about that. We've selected a final blend, and uh, you can look for it on your shelves and retail tobacconists somewhere hopefully near you um, in around November. So, what what went on in the uh, the process of, of selecting you know Ernie to do this? We I mean, a, obviously he's he's legendary. We had a dartboard, kind of like well, like this, and then we just kind of like closed our eyes and threw it. And uh, <laughs> no, no, a lot, a lot went into that that uh, that decision. In fact, we announced uh, Crown Heads being formed in February twenty second, and um, it took the better part of six months to really take our time to meet with manufacturers to discuss opportunities, got some blends from other guys, and uh, really just kind of took white sheets of paper and put them up on a conference room wall, and we had a rating system for manufacturers. Um, and it wasn't just about who's getting the highest rated cigar or who's making the hottest blends right now. It was, it was a lot of factors, um, one of which was we didn't want to be the eighth or ninth guy in, in a particular factory, another of which was just really get down to trust and integrity. You know, do you feel good when you, do you think that this guy's gonna give you the attention that you want? Does your philosophy line up with their factory's philosophy in terms of quality and, and just volume, or, or I shouldn't say volume, but you know, a smaller volume, because we're really trying to set up a boutique uh, brand right now. And um, it, you know, we, Ernie was the first guy we met with back in March, and he ended up being the last guy we talked to. And um, we, we're very fortunate that he agreed to do this this project with us, and we couldn't be any happier right now. It really just it was more of a thing like he hasn't done a cigar for anybody in 40 years except for himself, his family, like Glory Cabana, and um, we didn't know if we even had a, a shot with him to be honest with you. Because when we talked to him in March, it was a simple, casual dinner, go back to his office, smoke a couple of cigars. It was never even mentioned, can I make a cigar for you or anything like that. And it was just like, if I can ever help you guys, give me a call, the door's open, I can, whatever I can do for you. So we didn't even know if he'd be receptive to it. Um, but when he learned of our philosophy, what we wanted to do, what we wanted to create, the ideology behind the brand, um, he was on board. And it just stars aligned, I guess, and we were very fortunate. Now, what interests me is, obviously, that's I think that's a good choice, and I think that pretty much all you know, we, we talked about a Stogie review going with Ernie was you know good choice and something we would you know had we ever thought about you know going out with a cigar we'd probably do that. But did you have like a, a backup plan? I mean, was there a plan B? Was there some something else somewhere else you were looking to go with that? Or at that point, really, if there was a plan B, it was to undertake the arduous idea of actually starting our own small factory, of finding somebody that could actually be trusted to supervise daily production for us to outsource the tobacco and all that. And quite honestly, I don't think we, were, we would have been up to it. Um, it. But that was really the plan B because despite the fact that we met with a lot of other manufacturers and had blends and everybody was very gracious and welcomed us, welcomed us into their, their factory. And you know, I think that was one of the things we had going for us is that we had a track record with CAO. People knew that we could build a brand and be successful. So a lot of guys were very receptive to that and welcomed us into their, their factory. And, gave us carte blanche, but really, I mean, we wanted to really be in control of our own destiny, and it, it took a very unique setting to do so. So if it hadn't been Ernesto, we were actually considering maybe starting our own thing and starting it very small and, and growing it from there. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, that really requires somebody to be down there 24-7, 365, and yeah. you know, neither myself or my condo were up for that. Um, so if there was a plan B, that may have been a plan B, but... You know, everything luckily worked out the way it was supposed to. So what, what's it been like working with uh, Ernesto Perez Carrillo? I mean, well, I know you, you mentioned that you were working with him like right up until like almost the day of the trade show or something like that, which yeah, is crazy. Yeah. In fact, uh, well, to answer the question, I mean, working with him has been fantastic. I mean, Ernie's like, to me, he's like a scientist. And uh, well, if I can equate it to anything, it's like 15 years at CAO. 
I would compare that like going to get my undergrad degree in, in cigars and then now working with Ernesto for the short time that I have, uh, that we have, it, it's been like grad school. Um, just the things that he does with tobacco, the way he processes it, the way he evaluates it, the way he validates it. He's, he's, I've learned a lot in a short amount of time. Um, obviously, the guy knows how to make a good cigar. Um, but just little things that he does and, and that I was not used to doing in terms of evaluating the tobacco. Um, but beyond all of that, uh, to, to work with somebody that's just got so much integrity and he's just a good man has been a real blessing. I mean, he's just, I think I told you guys a story that, to give you an example of what a quality guy he is, it's, you know, we were flying from the Dominican to Miami, and then Mike and I were going from Miami to Nashville, and we were running short on our, our, our connecting flight. We were looking at possibly missing our flight, and Ernie says, well, I, I know a shortcut. I mean, he lives in the Miami airport, practically, so he knows his way around. So rather than just saying, okay, guys, go to the third floor, get out of the elevator, do this or that, he literally, with his bags in tow, said, follow me. And he walked us for like what seemed like a mile or two miles all through this airport, got us to exactly where the gate was, says, okay, there you go, and you make your flight. So the fact that even though he probably didn't think anything of it, to me that spoke volumes for the quality of, of, of man that he really is to, to go out of his way and help us in that small way. And, and to me, the, you know, just he's a great guy. He's a good man, aside from making great cigars. And it goes for his family as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, I've I've heard some some uh, description of the the four kicks name. Could you just like you know maybe break that down a little bit for us? The inspiration behind it. Yeah, possibly? the inspiration where that came from. You know what it means. Well, four kicks is a song by the Kings of Leon, and it's literally about you know kind of getting into a fight, and you know you you bring your switchblade, I'll bring my gun, and you know we'll we'll get back. It's 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 a song filled with with violence, vengeance, aggression, and it was just something that those emotions that were something that I experience, was experiencing back when CAO was kind of in a very tumultuous period in 2010. And it just, it stuck with me. And um, the name stuck with me. And I started to see other similar names in like the wine industry. There was, I think there was like the Three Graces and then there was a Four Kick or Four Roses Bourbon. Or yeah, something I was like just that. thinking that Four Roses Bourbon. Yeah, yeah. so I was like, well, Four Kicks would be kind of a cool name. And it was, that was the inspiration. And the, the art, was inspired by the gangs in New York. I was like watching that movie and I liked that oh, era, yeah. you know, that whole, the dead rabbits and all that. And I just said, Man, this is kind of cool. It's a, it's a really neat era to try to get some inspiration from. So that's kind of where the art behind that came from. And the idea of Four Kicks came from that song, Kings of Leon. And, you know, it was just kind of about the Swedish revenge of success. And so when we saw, you know, our 15 years of work being like kind of uprooted and taken away from us, it was like, okay, well, we'll just be quiet for now and the sweetest revenge will be success. We just want to be, get our little niche in the industry and, and, and be good at it. Was it kind of hard not going to the trade show? I mean, I know you didn't have anything, you know, at the time to really give out, but I mean, that might have, <coughs> it seemed like it might have been a difficult decision. It was a very easy one, actually. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, go to the trade show or be home with my wife and, and enjoy my home. Um, it was a pretty easy decision, but beyond that, um, you know, I, I had even told people that even if we had product ready um, for the trade show, I would not have launched it at the trade show. We decided internally that this just wasn't the right venue. I mean, we're a small company starting. You know, we're going to do 40,000 cigars this year. It's like, you know, you're going to have to say no to more people than you can say yes. Um, you're probably going to be stuck in front of a 10 by 10 pop-up screen next to a guy selling hookah pipes and walking sticks. And you're going to get lost in the shuffle. So I, I felt like for what we were trying to achieve, it wasn't the right venue for us to... to debut it whether we had product or not and obviously we didn't have product so you're going to go with a more direct approach probably contacting the retailers you know and that you you entrust and exactly we've already yeah. begun that process we have a seven foot map in the uh on the conference room wall and we've literally like said okay who are the guys that we know here here and here and here that are going to get behind the brand that we can work with you know in a top to top relationship and just say you know we're going to get behind you you guys get behind us and it, you know we try to do it more from a geographical standpoint so that people across the country have access to brick and mortar availability. Um, we are not going to be an internet or catalog or anything like that. So it, it's a difficult task to start with because you really can't supply all 50 states when you're talking about 40,000 cigars to start. But we'll slowly open that up and slowly build it and it will not be led by demand, it will be led by the supply. So if we feel that we have 300,000 cigars next year that are up to our standards, then we will open as many doors as we can to 
to you know distribute that product. So you say you've pl you've selected a blend. What can we kind of expect from that? If you were to describe it, if I was to describe it, it's it's probably medium body, medium in body, and uh, full flavor. We the whole concept for the, the first brand was going to be something that wasn't necessarily just like this. I'm going to make it as strong as I possibly can because I think a lot of guys are already doing that. I wanted something that was more balanced, more rich, more complex. That had a symphony of flavors. I know it's, it's kind of sounds cliche, but you know. When you hear a band or a symphony or whatever, one instrument isn't louder than the other, so one note can't be overshadowing another. And my favorite cigars have always been in that same kind of a, a profile, you know. Balanced, I guess. Balanced, yeah. you know, like Pete's Caballon or Dion's Epernay. To me, it was always, I couldn't pick out one note over the others, but when they all came together, it was just this great, rich flavor that I really liked and I kept coming back to. And so you kind of had those ones in mind when you were selecting the blend, I sort of? I had those in mind and some of my favorite Cuban cigars in mind, and, you know, it was never anything based upon power alone or, or strength or pepper. Um, you know, we, we blended some cigars back in the old days that, you know, I look back and they, even though they sold well, to me they were a one-note cigar and I wasn't interested in doing that. I'm not saying that that was a bad thing. There was certainly an audience for it, but not what we wanted to do going forward. Excellent, excellent. Well, you know, thanks for the time and uh, how, how are you enjoying the, uh, the tweet up here? I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying talking to you guys, enjoying smoking a cigar and... Uh, it's, it's great to have an opportunity to do this. It's just, you know, this to me kind of evokes what really is special about this business, and that is the camaraderie. And, you know, I've always said that a cigar is like the common denominator. You know, you, whether you're a doctor or you're a construction worker, you can say, oh, what are you smoking? And you have that common thread to, to start some sort of a bond. And uh, these events are great. I, I prefer doing something like this as opposed to the, the feeding frenzy where you've got a coupon and the guy just wants a free cigar. It's, it's nice to be able to interact and talk with people. and and just discuss Those grab and go cigars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah I'm not into that I'm not into that I don't, I don't see us doing any of that going forward either okay well you know thanks for taking a few minutes to uh, to talk with Brian, us it's always a pleasure yeah. to talk with the comedic mind behind the Stogie <laughs> Review I enjoy you guys man I do I, I'm a, I'm I appreciate that <laughs> I'm a fan and every day I always look at your site so keep doing what you guys are doing because excellent I, excellent it makes a difference we enjoy it and we're looking forward to seeing what uh, what happens with uh, Crown Heads in the future. Thank you. Hopefully, you know, maybe next year you'll still be talking to me. But if you're not, then I guess the, the product tanked. But, yeah. Uh, I don't, I, well, I, you got you got Ernie behind you, so it's gonna, it's kind of hard to conceive of that. And you know. Well, the thing that Ernie's always been clear about is funny, is because he says he's like, look, I'll make the cigar, but I want to be clear that you guys are picking the blend, so it's going to succeed or fail based upon what you guys decide. That's a good point. So, yeah. you know, while he's making it and building it i mean we're still saying okay this is the components that we want and you know we as you know we've opened it up to a focus group of, of smokers to get some feedback and we sent it out the original blends to about 15 guys including yourself yes. and jerry and walt and um out of that 15 i would say 12 picked the same blend out of four so we took that blend went back to the factory tweaked it in a few different directions tried some different things with dominican tobacco that didn't really work um, then we came back to the original blend and started to go in two different directions, which is round two that I sent to you guys. Yes, yes. So, yeah, which I so still we, owe we really, you, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we appreciate you guys taking the time and giving us your feedback because, you know, that, I think that's a good barometer for the market as well. So hopefully we'll, uh, if it doesn't work, then I'll blame you guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for that. A lot of pressure on us, I guess. <laughs> you guys called it. I yeah. saw all your tweets. It's like I called it. It yeah. tastes like something Ernesto would make. Yeah, and so I did. I did write did. that in my you notes. Did. Yes, your, I did. To your yeah. credit, you guys yeah. did nail it. So you have good palates. Great. You're doing the right thing. So, cheers. Thanks. All right, man.